Hey, 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 everybody. How's it going? It's the Otter Samurai here. Back with another exciting episode of Chicken Police. Paint it red. Last episode, we got the case by a miss, um... A lady. I can't remember her name. Miss Deborah Ibanez. Yeah, there we go. That her mistress, Natasha Katsenko, is getting stuff painted all over her place. So now we got to solve mystery with our good friend, Marty McCluck. We're leaving, sweetheart. Now, yeah, sure. Stay safe, boys. I'm glad to see you two together again. I'm afraid you're alone with that. <laughs> hey, I don't like to cluck to around with this guy. You won't, Marty. I bet you can't wait to get mixed up in some serious trouble again. Meow, yeah, sure. Well, that's true. I'm serious, boys. Be careful <laughs> out there. Thanks, Miss Hummingbird. We're big birds, Monica. We can take care of ourselves. Mostly. Okay. But take care of each other, too. Will do, Monica. <laughs> Oh, Monica's a yes, sweetie. Hey, Bosco. I see you're swamped, buddy. I've sent the old lizard away. I don't need him to foul the air anymore. Yeah. I hate his kind anyway. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pulling the race card there, buddy. Because he's a reptile? No, because he's a good-for-nothing piece of shit. Just like you two. And get out of my face before it roughs you up. That's true. You, <laughs> you letting off some steam something like that we'll go and check out some seedy joint we're cops after all ain't we and this is still clawville we're cock cops cock can chicken that's true pal protect and serve Yeesh, get a room you two he wants to ride my cock oh, okay yeah, shut up marty <laughs> We can't nope. avoid speaking with the chief first. I said goodbye to Monica, so I don't need to worry about that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's talk to Scruff McGruff here. What a surprise! The two pigeons back together. And without my permission, of course. I don't need your permission, you fat bastard. Chief Blood Boil. Damn. What damn. I said damn, you stupid fat fuck. Nothing, sir. What a lovely evening. Am I right? I don't want to hear your crowing, Santino. What the hell are you doing here? I'm on a case, Chief. Hey, hey, hey. Careful with the racist barking, old hound. <laughs> whoa, whoa, it's getting hot in here. Can so you take off all your feathers. It's New Year's after all. And you're on duty, if I'm not mistaken, Martin. Where do you think you're going? On a case. That's it, boss. To serve and protect. Sonny was in the neighborhood and stopped by to say hi. He's a cop too, right? Only on paper. <laughs> I love how Sonny's like... <laughs> I don't want any trouble, boss. I just wanted to say hi to Monica, and then this feather pillow showed up. I invited him to grab a quick coffee. You can allow him that much, can't you? Your coffee breaks usually end up in shooting or brawling, chickens. <laughs> Fine, we'll go for drinks at the bar. No oh, shooting just there. A coffee, boss. I swear. Oh, have a heart. It's New Year's Eve, and I haven't seen my old partner for so long. Thanks, kiss ass. You shot him with a shotgun, if I remember. Yeah, next I'm gonna get him with a newsy. <laughs> Family quarrel. For all the marrow bones of the world, get the hell out of my sight. Have a lovely <laughs> evening, boss. <laughs> you did, boss. You especially. Fuck off right now, Santino. Ah, you fucking bitch. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Lucius Wilford Bloodboil, dog Canis Lupus Familiaris, gender male, special feature. The chief is a real legend, legendary piece of shit. He also hates me. He's my boss and the living statue of justice. He's tough, ruthless, and above all, unbribable. And of course, he is a racist bastard. But still, I don't want to be here when he retires. The wind is how chaos devours Clawville for good. I thought it said four. Why did it say there was only eh, whatever? 
We're going to the hop dog. The hop dog was like the last one. Let me turn this up a bit. You can still turn back. My eyes lingered on the sign. An enormous dog. Like a neon god with limitless power over cheap hot dogs, plastic hamburgers, and watered down coffee. Yummy. The cold light called me. But I didn't want to get out of the car. If we went in, we were all going to be pancakes kept together by cold syrup. Mom's worried look shook me out of my reverie. Oh, cluck. Was I talking to myself again? <laughs> I love how Sonny won't use the F word, but he clucks instead. But now with... Uh, oh, shit. We don't serve bugs here. Of all that's furry. Nah. Is this still a thing? The situation's getting even worse, Marty. Have you heard how the young mothers of the Cobbler District are forced to make a living wait 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 so actual bug people i have no idea what goes on in the hive sonny i don't think i want to know but you're still gonna tell me right prostitution is the lesser evil <laughs> what's worse is that some folks have to sell their kids when they're still larvae god damn there are bug people here what why they pay a hefty sum for each of them downtown they sell them as Gourmet food. Oh, fuck. Most expensive restaurants. Here, eat my baby. Where's my money? Oh, I'm gonna be sick. We made this city, Marty. Clawville didn't do this to itself. Oof. Don't ever forget that. God damn, this sucks. The god of pancakes. Are you sure that thing's a dog? I always wondered. <laughs> the name Hop Dog is quite a giveaway. Don't you think so, Mr. Detective? Sometimes the most natural connections lead us astray. Who said that? Are you making fun of me, Marty? A natural born genius? <laughs> yeah, right. Hey. It's a fly man. Did this wreck belong to Zip? Well, it's a wreck just like him, so I guess it could. Fly guy. Look at the poor bastard. He's looking okay, Marty. Remember what we saw when we worked at the hive? Wild ones. Don't even remind me. Trying to forget that shit every day. All that fly shit. It's been even worse since. And I guess you heard about the riots. Who hasn't? You know, people are afraid that the great fire will happen again. And those hive houses are pretty flammable. Ooh. Don't speak of the devil, Marty. <laughs> but to be honest, I... I have no idea how this insect matter can be solved. I do. We just open the ghettos and let the insects live among us like they did for centuries. Your heart is pure mm -hmm. gold, buddy. But you know it's not that easy. Clawville isn't what it used to be. Hey, fly guy. Hey, pal. Can you hear me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he just doesn't understand what I'm saying. Speak and fly. <laughs> or he doesn't want to. That's also very likely. At least his hands are fucking normal hands. You got like human hands. Because mm, the whole town's probably drunk by now. Maybe that's the only <laughs> way it can bear itself. Doesn't it remind you of someone? Shut <laughs> up, Marty. <laughs> there, old bird. There used to be such the hive around here before it became an insect ghetto. That was a very long time ago, Marty. I was a little chick, and the hop dog had the best pancakes in the entire city. Well, <laughs> since Zip became the owner, the cook, and the waitress, I imagine it's all gone downhill. <laughs> True. Oh, that's Zip. Okay. At least the coffee's good. That's right. I have no idea what that mongrel's doing with it, and I don't want to know. But its aroma is unbeatable. It's filled with larva. There he is. Zip. Zip H. Murphy. A raccoon. Procyon loader. Male. 
an old enemy who became a good friend over the years. He used to be a small town criminal, but the underworld pushed him out. Now he makes the best coffee in the whole city, in a rundown roadside rest area. Oh, and he also proved to be a rather useful police informant. The Cobbler District, also known as the Hive, or Roach Town, was once part of the city, but then became a walled off ghetto, where 98% of the city's insect population is forced to live. Currently, the biggest threats of the city are the riots in the Hive, that have almost driven the city state to the break of civil war multiple times already. Not long after the Meat War and the following economic crisis, in 893, a fire almost destroyed the entire city of Clawville. Originated in the Ratwell District, not even the River Town was able to stand in its way. That was Fiery Hell Incarnate. After which, the city would be built up again from almost from scratch. 893, so... When is this set? 1920s? How long ago? How... Hmm. Hotel Atlas, that's timed. Yeesh. My condolences, pal. I see your cleaning lady died. Yeah, I'll stick a suck in it, money. Yeah, she set foot in the bedroom once. I haven't seen her since. <laughs> I dare to go after her. Oh, I wouldn't want to go in there either. But what's that smell? Yeah, cigarettes and whiskey. Yeah, with a hint of dirty laundry, but no. This is lavender? Ah. Ah, now that's got to be the Ibanez dame. You know, the broad who gave me the letter. And the job, obviously. Mm-hmm. Ah, pretty, huh? I can smell it. She's an exotic, too. An Impala, maybe? No, an antelope. Furry hell. That's why Chief Inspector Bloodboil hates you so much. He's jealous because your nose is better than a clucking bloodhound. <laughs> and I don't even have a nose. <laughs> the bitter old dog. He just hates all foul. Ah, yeah, true. Except for Monica. Monica is a fairy, not a bird. So, <clears throat> what now? Well, let's gather my stuff and head to the club. We gotta find out who this Natasha is and what she wants from us. I mean, what she really wants. She wants to get our cock. After you, boss bird. I wouldn't like to touch anything in here anyway. If it's okay. I'll just stand around and stare out the window? <laughs> sure, just do it quietly. Have you started on your great novel yet? I've already oh. started working on my will, but I realized I'd have to leave everything to you, so cluck that. <laughs> <laughs> Pity. I've always wanted a chicken coop smelling like old socks and bourbon. You'll have to earn it first, Marty. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up here one day. Yeah, and one day the sun's going to explode, too. <laughs> I suppose two shots was enough for today. At least until we learn what this Natasha woman really wants. Nothing in there. My wife took all the good ones. She knew they'd only gathered dust here. And she was right. Just a bunch of useless crap in there. Okay. Mm, it would be best to board it up. It'd go well with this rundown neighborhood. It may be run down, but somehow I still feel like it's honest. <laughs> you can live in Cockroach Town. That's an honest place, too. Has a similar stink. I won't live with no goddamn dirty roaches. Me, Marty. I thought about it. Uh, why am I not surprised? <laughs> the old days. You know, I miss him sometimes. What? The hype? Us as celebrity cops? <laughs> yeah. Nah, the work, the buzz, the phone ringing at 4 a.m. and knowing if you pick it up, you'll be dragged into something terrible, because that's your job. And of course, you pick it up every clucking time. <laughs> I'm not sure it's healthy to enjoy that. Nay, <laughs> no healthy animal becomes a cop in Clawville. Or any sane animal. Yeah, true. So this is them. Yeah, the wild gentlemen. They were role models when I was a kid. Well, you must have been a weird kid. Which ain't surprising. My idols were the White Wolf and Super Squirrel. The White Wolf Nerd. Wolf, eh? <laughs> Explains a lot. You know, when I was back in Averia, Clawville and the whole let's live together in peace bullshit seemed like an unattainable dream. 
Those clark, clark. guys made it happen. The city rose from the ashes of the great fire. Yeah, but look at it now. And what would have become of you if you hadn't ended up in Clawville? Maybe you'd even be happy? I'd be a miserable cop in another city. Perhaps. Ah, man. I can't imagine how you feel. The only good thing you ever had, huh? Shut up. Damn, Marty. That's cold. Sure. Hmm, I didn't know you used to be a kindergarten teacher. But leather? It's history. <laughs> hey, kids, I'm going to teach you about the leather group. I'm touched by the trust you have in me, boss bird. There are <laughs> things better left undisturbed, okay? And yeah. Got it. Who's that shaggy creature? That's MB Davis, you bird brain. Politician? <laughs> Am I gonna have to smash your <laughs> Seriously, I don't know who the hell he is. <sighs> Look, I listen to music of like Katie Furry and uh the Fur Fighters. Though a, a civilian organization started by the far most influential and wealthiest animals in the city. Fire of 867 and almost entirely wiped Clawville off the face of the wilderness. When the wild gentlemen intervened and built the city anew, using all their money and influence. They were heroes, or at least they were regarded as such. Some believe the fire was their doing. It was all part of a national conspiracy. But most likely, we'll never know the truth. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. A country inhabited exclusively by birds. It's a picturesque modern place governed by a democratic parliament. It's bordered by two seas and its economy is built mostly on air transport, commerce, and its aerial military. The country's on neutral terms with almost every other nation, except for the Great Meat War. I kept this standpoint all through known history. Leather and fur used to be high fashion, but nowadays, especially in Clawville, the use of real leather and fur is quite rare. It's not totally illegal to wear these kinds of clothes, yet, if you can afford it, but it's quite despicable, to put it mildly. Alright, we're done here. Uh, I don't think there's anything left in the hop dog. So to Zarkla we go. Midnight had passed, and the intoxicated madness kicked in. We could only crawl along Shalva District's main streets toward downtown. <laughs> the city's heart beat differently. It just looks so silly. Defaced by neon signs and billboards, like half-drunk lovers on a fine leather sofa. Great old houses neighbored by garish modern blocks. A place that makes the head hurt. The czar's huge neon sign was visible for miles. A blazing red sign advertised tonight's main attraction, the amazing Natasha. Natasha. Uh, cops were never welcomed at places like this. I hoped we were too late for the show. We had to be inconspicuous, but it was never easy with this bird mountain by my side. Uh. Hey, it's our good bunny friend. Ah, so this is the famous Zar Club. More like infamous, Marty. Ah, kind of so itchy tonight. For our kind, that's for sure. And I don't mean that they don't like foul here. Well, at least we don't have to be afraid that they see you as a detective, Boss Bird. Very can it, Marty. Marty. So what are we gonna do now? We find Natasha, the broad who sent me the message, remember? But first, we need to get into the club. And Marty, please, don't monkey this up. Excuse me, <laughs> on behalf of the well-respected and noble primate community of Clawville. I am not gonna throw my shit at the goat. Cut the crap, Marty. Let's focus on what we're here for, okay? As you say, boss bird. Honestly, I think these types of women only see faceless tuxedos, cufflinks, and wallets. And in the mirror... They're just brooches, necklaces, and earrings. 
Don't hmm. be so radical, Marty. They're women. They live by different rules. They all say money. They all say us. Um, that was kind of deep. It's not. Just bullshit. <laughs> where that came from. Ooh, teach me, master. When you're old and wise like me, you'll realize none of it is worth a damn thing. Wait, damn. That was deep again, right? Maybe it was, Marty. Maybe it was. Amazing. <laughs> Stork lady. Hey, that's your old friend, right? Wait, what was his name? Uh, Lawrence? No. Lamar? No, Liam. Lewis. Lewis, dummy. This is him. Let's be honest, Sonny. I always thought that guy's not all there in the head. Should I thank oh, him shit. for that? Or kill him for it? You're reading my mind, boss. Hang on. Is Lucas really such a big fan? Lewis. And yes, he's got the whole Chicken Police book series. Oops. Damn his taste. <laughs> Sonny, my dear friend. Hey, bunny boy. Hi, Lewis. This is my partner. But I'm sure you already know. You have no idea how happy I am to meet you, Mr. Marty. I'm a big admirer of your work. I know you guys like to rub their cock. It's all mine, Lawrence. Lawrence? <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> so, the legendary chicken police back together? <laughs> Isn't it amazing news? <laughs> Don't ruffle my feathers, Lewis. Those days are long gone. We're just here for the entertainment. Or something like that. I see. But that's a sh sh shame. That's a sh sh shitty shame. See you inside. I have something to do, my pal. But I'll try um, for the main event. I can't say. F -f 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 He's like Porky Pig. Ah, son of a bit, son of a bit, bit, son of a bit, son of a gun. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say son of a bitch, didn't you? Okay then. Catch you later, pal. Aw, uh, Lewis is adorable. I'd give him a hug. Oh, look at that! Isn't that the new? It is, Marty. A brand new 942 Silver Hawk. Okay, so it's in there 9042. Since I left Averia. Of all that but it's furry, like 1920s vibe. It? Maybe it's Ibn Westler's. I guess he's no paper tiger. Just a paper rat. Yeah, he sounds like a fellow who drives around in one of these. Lucky bastard. Yeah. Huh. I like this. Why is that? Wait, hold on. Did it say Sunset Boulevard? I don't know. Because it's moving, I guess. You're a simple bird, aren't you? Yes, I am. Okay, hold on. Moonlight Boulevard. That's Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> Mr. Neville, I'm ready for my close-up. I am that's the fucking part of the movie that just sticks to me. I, Mr. DeVille, I'm ready for a close-up. She just goes through the camera like that. It's a good movie, don't get me wrong. Sunset Boulevard is a really good movie. But Jeez, it's just... <laughs> that that's not a guy. That's the only movie that sticks out of head. Straight from the dog-eared pages of a cheap detective novel. Aw, just because he's a ram doesn't mean he's a demon. Yeah, I bet his name's Bill. <laughs> he's definitely a bob. Five bucks for Bill? Okay, I'm in. Hi, Hi Bill. Pal. Gentlemen, how can I help you on this wonderful chilly night? What's your name? We're expected in the VIP lounge. My apologies, but I don't remember ever seeing you gentlemen here before. May I ask? Now stop right there, big guy. I get it. Yeah, I know exactly how this works. So what do you have to do to get in? Do we have to suck your dick? Nothing's easier, sir. Are you on the list? The list? Yeah. I'm, uh, uh... Oh, don't tell me you forgot. I'm afraid I did, Marty. Sorry, big guy, but I'm pretty sure we're not on the list tonight. That's a shame. I'm really sorry, sirs. In that case, you can't come in. We're cops. We have an investigation going on. Yeah. Damn it, Sonny. Pleasure, gentlemen. Aw, oh, here.
Okay, I thought we were gonna get a. Look, I really don't want any trouble, but it is even more inconvenient for me, sir. But this place doesn't like uh, coppers. Coppers. I can't let just anybody in, and there are some I'm strictly forbidden to. Please, you have to understand. Listen here, you cow. He's a ram, dickhead. No who we are? You ever read the papers? Of course, I know who you are, sir. I read the news and more. And I must admit, it's an honor to meet you in person, Mr. Santino Feather. Feather than his Mr. Marty McChicky. Oh, is one of my favorite books. Oh my God, not the books again. <laughs> <laughs> Only everybody knows his fame is because we're books <laughs> characters. It'll be inconvenient for me if I have to use force on you, gentlemen. If you do that, you could be part of our book. You know, just let us in. What did you just say? Relax, Marty. This guy has chicks like you for breakfast. Now, thanks for the information, pal. Uh, have a nice night. Thank you for understanding, gentlemen. And forgive me for my austere composition. Dude, this is a really nice bouncer. If he was an American bouncer, he'd like bash their heads and throw them in a ditch. No problem, Shakespeare. Say, big guy, you know Mr. Lewis Hayworth? But of course. Mr. Al Hayworth. Mr. gentleman, and also a frequent visitor of the club. Is that so? Good to know. And? I'm afraid that is all, monsieur. You're not allowed to come in here. That is all. What can you tell me about the first lady of the place, big guy? Uh, you mean Miss Natasha Katsenko, sir? You're yes. right on point, pal. Nothing you don't know already, sir. Ah, uh, what is your name? My name, sir. It is Thomas. Yeah, I heard you saying it's dealer Bob. It is me there, so you give me the five dollars, I'll let you in. Just try me. Well, she owns the place. Well, no shit, we already know that. And, uh, that's it? Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> unbelievable. Pardon, monsieur, but I'm not permitted to say anything more. If I sleep with you, will you let me in? Jeez, look at that. That's not a guy. That fellow's built like a brick shit house. I don't think we'll be able to just sneak past him. Wanna bet? <laughs> not today, Marty. Remember, we must avoid suspicion. Ah, okay, okay. Hmm. No trouble. I get it. It's okay, Bertha. Maybe next time. <laughs> He's gun now ready to shoot the bouncer. What was that? Bouncer's the nice guy. Just the wind. Bouncer's a nice dude. Don't fuck with him. You bring Big Bertha with you? No. Gods, no. What are you thinking? What idiot would bring a shotgun to a club? Was that a rhetorical you. question? Hey, Lewis, can you help us get in? Look, Lewis, that bouncer over there. Well, yes. He is a bit intimidating, but his manners are impeccable. Am I right? Yes, indeed, but it seems tonight we're not on his list. God damn, I just want to give Lewis a hug. He's cute. Oh, I see you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I get it. I get it. <laughs> You'd like to go in, but he won't let you. Yeah, something like that. No, 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 no problem at all. Come with me. I'll talk to him. I'll s s suck him off while you go inside. Large, pal. Yeah, thanks, bunny. Excuse me. Ah, oh, jeez, what the hell's wrong with you, Marty? Oh, that's so racist. Yeah, did I say something wrong? Yeah, buddy is a racist term, dickhead. Sir, how'd you do? Everything's <laughs> fine, Mr. Aworth. Good. <clears throat> uh, look, this noble pair of pigeons are my friends. <laughs> pigeons. Okay. Oh, okay, hang on. And as for you, <clears throat> you owe me one, g g gentleman. Yeah, thanks, buddy. It was my pleasure to help you, as always. It's got that thing going on. It's cute. Come, Tammy's adorable. The jazz overwhelmed us. There was no band in sight, yet the music seeped from the walls like. Years of cigarette smoke and the 
the smell of spilled whiskey. Behind the bar, now of fancy bottles <laughs> reflected the harmonious voices of pretty dames and the clinking of crystal glass. It was the kind of place that makes you drunk, even if you've never had a sip. A nice place for someone like me. No matter how alien I felt, it was strangely like coming home. Welcome to the Zara. Well, here we are. Mother of... I take you to the nicest places, eh, sweetheart? Oh, does <laughs> mean you're buying, honey? Don't even say that. <laughs> oh, men these days. So, we're here to find a dame called Natasha. Yeah. I have a hunch she won't be hard to find. Let's mingle and try to avoid suspicion. Just like always. <laughs> no, Marty, not like always. <laughs> This time it's for real. <laughs> Where's Natasha? Where's Natasha? Grab her chigger. Where's Natasha? Big buck. I was hoping to have missed the main event. Oh. So says the little butt jam. But what? But what? That's not even a word. I was hoping to have missed the main event. You're a rusty old cock, that's why. <laughs> okay, cool. Good thing I missed it. Butt jam. But what? That's not even a word. It is now. <laughs> All because of you. You should feel honored. Butt jam. <laughs> Sometimes you're like an evil little child. Sorry, give me a sec. After getting dumped and having my heart smashed to pieces by a beautiful man, I decided, so, why not do this again? The hell is Natasha? Well, let's ask that stud over there with those nice gals. Oh, he likes to stud. Mm, that guy looks way too horny for my taste. Boo! <laughs> oh, man, your sense of humor is bad as ever. <laughs> bad joke. Get used to it again. What if, uh... <clears throat> Foxy fella. Who sends flowers? What? No, <laughs> I read it somewhere. What? Fascinating. I didn't know you could read. It's amazing. Yeah, I started with uh, Hop on Pop, and I just went from there. Ha ha ha! Very funny. <laughs> ah, this is the life, huh? What's this guy do? Real estate? Mob accountant? Or is he a movie star? Uh, <laughs> oh, I can't think of a good deer name for him. It's Bambi. I was trying to think of a clever, like, actual actor's name mixed with, like, Buck or Deer or something, but let's go with Bambi. He looks like a coat hanger to me. Uh, <laughs> actually worse than the previous joke. <laughs> I try. I'm bad at magic jokes. Ha ha This is the... He looks like... Okay, no. Remember that old case with the fox and the raven? With the grapes, right? I even forget. God, absurd, right? Oh, jeez. Cheese, 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 cheese. Yeah, hunger can bring out the monster in animals, right? If anybody wants to know, it's an Aesop fable. The wildest and most primordial instincts, no matter how civilized they seem. As you say, Marty. Hmm. Remember that other case with the turtle and the rabbit fella? <laughs> Another Aesop fable. Tortoise in the hair. Oh, gosh, Marty, where do you dig these out? Uh, my mind is a bottomless pit, my friend. Was the rabbit a runner? And the turtle was what, his buddy? Or his dealer, actually. Ah, yeah, you're right. We found the rabbit near the river with a missing leg. God damn. Stuff. Two missing legs, actually. But yeah. What happened with the turtle in the end? It's a little bit blurry. He won the race after breaking the rabbit's legs. Your bottomless pit of a mind is a dark and sad little place. The turtle thought he would run faster if he ate the legs of the rabbit. Jesus Christ, that's not how I remember the tortoise in the hair. This city's seriously fucked up. It is, Marty. Hey, he doesn't go clucking around. Oh, hey, sexy. The loudest howl. Cassidy Lupus and Cassandra Ruby Faye. Huh. 
Another lupus movie. Jeez. Is there nothing today they're not trying to sell with this guy? Whoa, don't be rude, Sonny. Lupus is a timeless genius. Have you seen Predator City? God, I'm still getting chicken bumps. But wait, who's that next to him? Cassandra Fay. Can you not read? Cassandra Ruby Fay. Nah, never heard of her. Cassandra Ruby Fay. Oh, God, even her name makes me go weak in the knees. God damn, boy, calm What's down. Your blood pressure, pal. Don't mind me. Just women and guns are my only weakness. <laughs> women with guns makes me horny no, as fuck. No shit. Uh, Hannibal Bogan and Louisa Bandicoot, the big sheep. You think this is one of those movies where the femme fatale gets everything in the end and the poor detectives left stranded? Yep, just like life. <laughs> Murder, my tweet. Hick, Hicks Poodle, Claire, Turmoil, uh, and a shiny. Hicks Poodle plays a private eye, hired to look for a woman, then gets into some kind of blackmail thing that's connected to the first case, and... Hey, uh, Marty? No spoilers, you son of a bitch. Yeah? yeah. I don't give a shit. <laughs> this done for hire. Veronica Kate and Robert Fodder. Oh, I know this Fodder guy. He was kind of good in Death of the Horse. <laughs> You've seen every cluckin' movie. You know, Laura <laughs> and I go to the movies a lot. When was the last time you went? When they played Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Exactly 12 years ago. Oh, you remember that precisely? Let me guess. Molly? Yep, our very first date. And our very last one, too. I see. What did you watch? A porno. I don't remember. I just remember her. Nothing else. Oh, that's actually kind of sweet. You're a clucking poet. I mean it. Okay, so he'll say fuck when he wants to. This guy is certainly not a gangster henchman. Of course he's not. He's a total pussy. Oh, I can't speak to him. Marty, I bet you wouldn't dare to go up to him and ask if he hasn't seen your fur coat. Yeah. Why? Why? I'm mad, yeah, but not suicidal. Nah. Are you chicken or what? Piss off, old bird. Nah, chicken shit. <laughs> Wait, I can't look at these two? Fox fella. Waitress. Oh, damn, look at that bird. <gasps> look at that fucking horse, he's majestic. It's not in my place, but Laura's father went to that guy when his, you know, problems uh, had gone too far. <laughs> treading on thin ice, Marty. No, I just <laughs> look. Fellas at the station are talking, you know, all kinds of things. Moses, Plato, Bosco, and the others. What about Philoctetes? Talking, eh? About what? About why Blood Boil took my badge? About what an untrustworthy alcoholic wreck I am? Hmm. Look, I, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter. Good. And let it stay that way. At least we're cracking this one together, yeah? Shut up, Matty. Sure, a man's best friend is a horse. Uh, that's not a dog, Sonny. That's a horse. He just has a very weird mane. <laughs> I didn't mean the body, I meant the bar. Oh, I see, right. Yeah, because that totally makes sense. Because you're an alcoholic, I got it. Hmm. Two whiskeys, kid, and no horsing around. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. Oh my god, he has like that, uh, it's so totally done, boys. Oh my god. Uh, Sonny, you gotta drive, you know? I can pound like 15 bottles of booze, money. Yeah, you're right, Marty. Hey, long face. Give me a glass of tap water too, okay? Hey, don't be rude. That's Sarah Jessica Parker right there. Yes, sir. Coming right up. That wasn't exactly what I meant. <laughs> Tell me, hey, breath. 
Hey, bro. Seen Natasha tonight? Not yet, sir. But she's coming on soon. Get along, little doggy. Oh, that's right. It's more like John Wayne-ish. Well, can you tell me anything about Mr. Ibn Wessler? Sir, I... I don't want to. What about... Let's see. Five dollars, maybe? But, sir, you haven't even paid for your drinks yet. Are you gonna have the money for both? On the details, big nose. You do your job, and we'll do ours, okay? I mean, we're not here for work, of course. We're just here to relax. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little fun. Of course, gentlemen. Yeah, whatever. Well, Gentlemen, your drinks. Thanks, buddy. Uh, uh, sorry, but we have to run. Uh, thanks anyway, Bojack. <laughs> Bojack Horseman? My name is not Bojack. Everybody say that show. Uh, I tip you, pal, but I don't have any change, so... <sighs> sure, sir. The Tsar welcomes you back anytime. He looks like an older bartender. He should have had, like, a deeper That's voice. Good, Bojack. <laughs> she has pretty long legs. I mean, pretty and long legs for a squirrel, but I don't want to be prejudiced. Because that's nuts. We're not here to stare at pretty squirrels. We're here to investigate, remember? Hang on, I need to see that. Oh, okay, I thought it was a rabbit. I was like, do you not see the fucking rabbit ears? That's not a... But it is a squirrel. Hey, there's Filmar. Who? Oh, yes. <laughs> Filmar, because that's what he calls himself, right? You know what? <laughs> we had some seriously wild cases to Oh, face. Mainly in Averia, way before Clawville. Another place and another life. <laughs> Sounds good. Like the blurb of some cheap pulp fiction book. Yeah, it was the exact opposite. But the old bird's worth saying hi to. Hey, Filmar. Actually, let's look at your file real quick. Phil Marlowe. Phil Mar Balls. Falcon. Falco Burriagora. Male. An absolutely average, forgettable guy. Emma Acquaint old acquaintance from Iveria. Well, well. If it isn't <laughs> the great detective, Marlowe. Blow me, Sonny. You know I don't use that name anymore. Hey, I'm Fillmore now. I changed my voice. Got deeper. Okay, Mr. Dumbass Alias Fillmar Low. Fillmar Low. So says someone who tried to go undercover with the Feather Pillow Mafia is a turkey, right, Mr. Turk Cayman? <laughs> that was a long time ago. I was young. <laughs> I stick to my principles and my stupidity. Phil Marlowe and that's that. Don't rile me up, you old fart. Aren't you like the same age as him? Okay, okay, fair enough. Sorry, I'm a little clapped tonight. Uh, I know the feeling, pal. By the way, what are you two doing here? You stick out a bit. Are you here for a good old-fashioned beating? We mm -hmm. stick out? Man, you look terrible. Like someone who sat on an electric pole. Don't even ask. I feel exactly like that. Somebody shoved an electric pole right at my car. My case. Five feet tall, half of that legs, angelic voice, demonic eyes, just the usual. Natasha? Oh boy. And you? Something like that. Just don't know the exact numbers yet. A dame named Natasha. She called us here. If I'm not mistaken, the joint is hers. Yeah, she owns the joint, amongst others. Well... Good luck, guys. That broad has a reputation. She's not the kind to toy with, if you know what I mean. Any useful information? Hmm. For free? Stop clucking around, Philmar. All right, <laughs> but just because of the old days. Look for me after you've talked to her. You wouldn't understand what I have to say about her before then. Don't leave unless you're thrown out. In which case, you know the drill. We don't know each other. I'll deny you in a blink. Didn't All right, Marty. Well, we'll be back. All right, Marty's next to me. Hey, it's that rat-faced Fink. Where's that rat son of a bitch at? Mr. Rat Bitch. That woman with Ibn. I think I know her from somewhere. Maybe in your dreams, pal. 
Oh, that's a woman? Isn't that... Yes, it is. The great Ibn Wessler in the flesh. So much for our incognito. You think he noticed us? Only if he's not entirely blind. Gentlemen, how you doing? Just act nonchalant, my friend. No, it can't be. What now? Is that Olivia? No, Marty. <laughs> hey, uh, Olivia. Are you talking to me? It's me. Marty McChicken. <laughs> Remember we clucked together? Oh god. What a pleasant surprise. The roaster coppers in person. That, why did I think that was gonna be his voice? Yeah, Weasley voice. Like uh like the leader of the uh Toon Squad from uh Roger Rabbit. Chicken police. But yeah, Mr. Wessler, you could say so. The name's Sunny Featherland, of course, of course. Chicken police. Your partner is uh... <laughs> He is, uh, I boy, my woman, I'm gonna fucking kill him. Marty McChicken, sir. I, I just introduced myself to your lady companion seconds ago. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy to see you. <laughs> so, to what do we owe this pleasure, gentlemen? Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> we, we were, um, just in the neighborhood and cut the crap, Marty. All right, we're here for your sweetheart, Natasha. We're gonna gun her down. Oh. I see. No big deal. Just a blackmail thing. You know, horrifying threats written on the wall with blood red paint. The usual stuff. You must be familiar with this kind of thing. Yeah, I did that to her wall. Yeah, indeed. It's a uh, nasty business. But I didn't know Natasha hired a detective because of this simple matter. But to be honest, I understand. I would have taken matters into my own hands, you see. But I'm kind of busy. Fucking this broad over here. Mr. Wessler had a meeting with Attorney General Hamtaro yesterday, so it's Hamtaro time. Hamtaro. Oh, dear Olivia, it's okay. These gentlemen are just doing their job, right? And if I've heard correctly, they're notoriously thorough. So, how can I help you? That's right, Evan. Once our cock goes deep. And it goes all the way till we finish. We've got a few questions, if you don't mind. I'm at your service. Cool. Good old Phil. Good old Phil Meyer must know something about Natasha that could have been important for the case, but he won't talk until I meet her. Seems a bit of obvious. This must be something really significant. Phil Meyer, the name he goes by nowadays. As an old comrade from before the Clawville times, one of the best private eyes in the city, and just like most of them, gets into trouble with the law pretty often. Yet he's one of the very few people who can still be trusted in Clawville. Hobart Ibn Whistler, species rat. Good looking, charismatic, and clucking gangster. I love you, Blackwig. Crow. Female. Unusually tall and slim for a crow, she's quiet and mysterious. I love you, as currently Ibn Whistler's assistant and escort. Finding out whether there's anything other than a working relationship between Miss Crow and Mr. Rat could prove valuable. Nice bunker you got here. Well, thank you, but it's not mine. Not anymore. <laughs> but I'm sure you already know that. <sighs> Listen, detective. If you want to know something, please ask straight, huh? How big are you uh, for a rat? Mr. Wessler, let's make this a bit more professional. I'm not as exciting as people tend to believe. I grew up in a poor family of many siblings. I'm the only one still alive, unfortunately. My career started with a shoe store, and now, here I am. I killed all my brothers and sisters because, you know, we're rats. I wouldn't call that an average life. Shoe store owner to mob boss. How dare you speak to Mr. Wessler like that? I will kick your fucking ass. Leave it, Olivia, dear. It's sorry, clucking ass. I'm sorry if I offended you, Mr. Wessler. Shall we talk about something else? About my size 10 boot up your ass? Everybody knows Mr. Hayworth. He's an antique piece of furniture in this city, so to speak. He's my best friend. I'll kick your ass for that. Bit worn out. It's not my fault that he's so much in debt, detective. But the name of his family still rings quite loud in Clawville. Is that still worth anything? 
The name is just their name, of course. But the man behind the name is another matter, Mr. Featherland. You're Mr. Right Featherland. Right? Thank you. Look, detective. If you want to know something, just ask. All right, Mr. Wessler. Uh, we're not going to talk about Natasha? Okay. Has your assistant been working for you long? Are you talking about me? No, I'm talking about the other assistant behind him. Yes, I'm talking about you, ma'am. Let me answer your question, then. I've been in Mr. Wesley's employment for six months. Why do you ask? Did he get tired of Natasha? Just, uh, routine questioning, you know. Most of them aren't good for anything. Just killing time. It sounded rude to me. Yeah, please forgive a detective. Olivia's a real firecracker. That's why she's wild in bed. Hmm. Don't be shy, detective. Ask me anything. All right, Mr. Wessler. Let's see. Well, what the fuck am I supposed to ask? I asked. Look. All right, Mr. Wessler. Oh, so question, duh. Guy. Unfortunately, I don't know enough about him, so I have to be cunning. I can't just pin him against a wall yet. I can't do that the anime thing where you put him against the wall and like, hey, how you doing? How'd you feel when you heard about the blackmail? How'd you feel when you heard about the blackmail? Honestly, I found it ridiculous. Oh, look at his little eyes. They're like, mm. And now? Now I'm kind of interested. But I wouldn't call it blackmail yet. They're just empty threats. There were no demands. His eyes are adorable. Point. Thank you. Are we done? No, not quite. I only asked you like one question. You have like a million to go. Sorry to hear that. Hmm. You seem a very busy man. May I ask what you do? Eh, it's uh, uninteresting. Would you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> it sucks ass. I've got a small share in the meat substitute business. If the new product works, eh, maybe we can make your job easier. Cool. You mean reduce predation in Clawville? There are such plans. Uh, if you're interested, talk to Olivia, my assistant. She's an expert in what she does, uh, unlike me. I fuck up every chance I get. That's it for now. You're very taciturn, Mr. Wessler. Though I've heard you're quite the speaker. Thanks, mister. Look, I'll gladly talk to anyone about business. And even happy to talk about art. But, uh, I'm no fan of interrogation on a night out. Are you even on duty? Yes, I am. Sorry for any offense, Mr. Wessler. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about art, baby. Wessler is tougher than I thought. And he's secretive. It's time to gently beat around the bush. Hmm. Are you and Natasha close? <laughs> what do you mean exactly, chicken? Mr. Shit, wrong question. If you please, this could be important. How does she stand on the scale from sweetheart to wife? Oh, you have some nerve. Ask her that. I'm a gentleman, Mr. Featherland. Sorry. Really? Maybe you can't comprehend it, but I can't ask for her hand until she offers it to me herself. Aw, that's cute. Oh, chivalrous. Get to the point, detective. Ibn is quick-tempered, and I can use that to my advantage. I've confounded and softened him with my previous questions. Now it's time to be specific and ruthless. Oh, so that's a good thing then. Have there been similar threats in the past? Right to the point, yeah? Yeah, I get it. But sadly, this is a dead end, my friend. No, no threats like these. Uh, whether you believe it or not. Are you the one doing the threats? Well, really seems like a dead end so i'll just back up and try from a different angle you do that the mob boss and the pussycat eh how did you even meet <laughs> huh are you trying to piss me off corpora so i accidentally let some big secret slip out huh? no i'm curious a simple answer would work <sighs> you know natasha 
She's both connoisseur and muse. Uh, uh, so, uh, <laughs> how was it? Uh, uh, when was it exactly? You don't remember? That's strange. Ah, yeah. The millions, of course. It was like another lifetime. It happened right here. Only this place was called the millions back then. <laughs> she was a dancer. Behind the scenes, I arranged up a whoa, 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 hold on. on the big stage. Yeah, maybe she still doesn't know it was me. Then one day, I invited her for a drink with a promise that if she was willing to meet me, I'd buy the place for her. I guess yeah. she was willing. And able. Day, she had the club in her name. Well, that is romantic. Yeah, there are many kinds of romance, Birdman. There's cheap and there's expensive. You get what you can afford. There's no middle ground. Do you live in the same house as Natasha? Oh, you're really something. Natasha's a free woman, but mostly, yeah, at my place in Gold Town. <laughs> but she has her own kind of a weekend house. Mm, how often does she use the weekend house? Yeah. On the weekend, weekend door. Roughly. I see. That's very important information. Yeah, if you say so. Hmm. So Natasha feels like she's in grave danger, yet she's still going out alone. Yeah, I know what you're getting at, but I'm a hundred percent sure of her loyalty. She's gone out very rarely since this started, and mostly in my company. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm not sure if you do, but uh, in our social circles, banquets and dinners are frequent. Ooh, nice. Mm. Illegal gambling nights. <laughs> you got me there. Yeah, you're right. Natasha is crazy about the roulette wheel. Always <laughs> putting it all on the red, right? Yeah, you're a real rotten bastard, Sonny. Although the wheel <laughs> always on the red. Yeah, right. She never bet black even once. So, can we meet your lady? I don't see why not. But first, please, listen to her sing. She's on soon. Alright, we did it. Rusted copper. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Final thoughts. Not bad, but not good either. It's okay for a rookie, but you can do better. Next time, pull yourself together and pay attention to the signs. Focus, Sonny. Evans is trying very hard to change the subject when it comes to the threats. Obviously, he knows more he's willing to tell. Thank you for your time. I'm not retrying that shit. Fuck that. I have no doubt about that, unfortunately. Hey, uh, we should uh, grab a coffee or something, Olivia. You know, for old time's sake. Pleasure to meet you, gentlemen. Goodbye. Oh, shit. She don't want none of that, Marty. Please, take a seat. The show's gonna start soon. Here we go. Natasha. Oh, cluck, yeah. It's like, oh! The emerald eye is so fucking beautiful. Shit, I'm in love. I hope this is not a copyrighted song. Oh, he's falling for her. <laughs> Sonny. Sonny. God damn. That was amazing. That was um unique. Oh, that is cute. Nobody has ever given me such a unique compliment before. 
I forget your name is Santino Featherland. And I want to cluck you. I thought so. You look more or less like I imagined. More or less. Santino I thought you were a duck. More, Mr. Featherland. <clears throat> you were amazing, dear. As always. Yes, I know. Now let me talk to chicken, please. Could you be my little furball and fetch me a cocktail? Oh, she. <laughs> Ibn will be back soon. We'll have a few minutes to talk. Then he'll end the conversation and throw you both out. <laughs> With all due respect, ma'am, we're not that easy to get rid of. Doesn't matter who's trying, believe me. <sighs> Doesn't matter, he'll do it. That's why I'm telling you. I don't want a scene. My room's upstairs. Meet me there in 20 minutes. Come alone, Sonny. You'd be too conspicuous otherwise. Hey, I understand. <laughs> you know, they call him Target Marty at the station. I don't have time, Mr. Featherland. I only have 20 minutes. Yeah, sure thing, Natasha. I'll come to your room. Three knocks, a short pause, then another three. I'll be waiting. Go, before he comes back. I knew she was trouble the first time I saw her. She wore danger like a perfume. It was simply part of her being, and it attracted me, like light attracts the moth people. That's racist. She wanted to be the microphone as she whispers her melodies. God damn, dude. Pillow she rests her feet on while reading some cheap romance. I wanted to be her nightdress, barely touching, barely covering her marble skin. God damn, dude. But I was a cop, and a lifetime wouldn't be enough to rid myself of what a woman like her hides under her makeup. Keep your distance, Sonny. Just keep your distance. All right, well, we're going to be interviewing Natasha on the next episode. Everybody, thank you so much for following along. If you missed any of the action, the episode will be my YouTube channel later under the Auto Samurai. Hit like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next episode. See ya.